Um, yes, so uh, very excited about this next section because uh, I think it's great that we're able to, to do this, really. Um, we're able to add a, an update to the LEGO Speed Champions expansion. Um, should, we, should we take a look? Yeah, wow. Yeah, so it is a brand new uh, LEGO Speed Champions car. Wow, um, yes, it is none other than the LEGO uh, Bugatti Chiron. Chris, do you want to tell us all about it? Yep, so it uh, follows the same ethos as all the other uh, Speed Champions we have in Forza Horizon 4. So we've built it as if underneath it there is a Bugatti Chiron, but it's it's got the LEGO exterior on it, so it's still got that 1500 horsepower engine in it. Um, still all-wheel drive, still incredibly fast on a straight line. Um, but yeah, it looks like a Lego car and uh, drives. This one's actually a little bit different to the normal Bugatti because the dimensions just made it a bit weird. So uh, this one, uh, a little bit more understeer in it, um, just because it's, it's narrower, which gave some issues. Um, but yeah, it's, uh, it's very much like all the other Speed Champions in that it's, it's a Bugatti Chiron underneath it. Mm. So, yeah, just, just as fast, every, every bit as luxurious. Um, probably, probably not quite as comfortable. Uh, in the, uh, <laughs> no, it might be a bit, <laughs> bit, bit hard seats in it. Yeah. Whoa, whoa. Well, what? Sorry, excuse my driving. <laughs> it's almost two tons of Lego brick yeah. just, uh, <laughs> coming to an abrupt halt there. Uh, I think one of the great features of this car, both the model, the model that you can purchase from Lego, or the one that you can drive in this expansion, is that really cool tail light. Um, it's a, a really iconic part of the car, which Lego had to recreate using a red elastic band. Which was incredibly ingenious. Yeah. Um, and the one we've got in game, as you can see there, is moving around. Um, we treated it like we do with all, all the other cars. If you'd scaled that up, you wouldn't expect it to be this really thin rubber band. It would have a bit of mass to it. It would, it would feel like a, like a large, heavy band. So it's got that kind of lower frequency movement to it. Yeah, and the uh, vehicle art guys put a lot of thought into the way that it illuminates as well mm. as, as a sort of rubber band. I think that's a it's a really nice effect that they've achieved with it as well, so that's really cool. Yeah, and Matt, of course, we didn't just want to we just want, do want to throw the car in there. That's the playlist. So uh, I'll jump, jump back to summer. summer. Yeah. <clears throat> so a car I'm really excited to see, um, Lexus returns uh, along with Toyota. So we've got the Lexus LFA, uh, completely bespoke supercar. They have 50% completion in summer, alongside the Porsche 917, uh, the long tail in its psychedelic livery, which is also mm. very cool. And um, also in summer, our other new and exclusive car is the Rover SD1. So you'll be able to get that from this championship. It's never over with a Rover. <laughs> and then <laughs> uh, <laughs> Awesome yeah. gives you the chance to get the 488 <coughs> Pista. Again, I know a lot of people have been requesting that. So There's a new, uh, new Fox Line Weekly as well. That's right. This is the one I mentioned a moment ago. So um, you'll be able to complete this with either the real or the Lego Bugatti Chiron. We've got some uh, events for you to do here. And we also have a new showcase remix, the Pillar of Autumn, paying homage, of course, to the, the, the ship in Combat of Old. Um, the Pillar of Autumn. Yep. <laughs> Very cool. And um, you can see where the design team get their bad puns from. <laughs> Lead by example. Uh, and also, as I mentioned, the monthly rivals event there uh, with the with the Lego Chiron. Then in winter, our next car is the Aston Martin Vulcan uh, AMR Pro. So that's an uh, extreme upgrade package that you can get for a Vulcan if you are an owner of such an amazing car. And as usual, we'll be doing a deep dive into all of these uh, soon. And then we've also got the Ford Supervan 3 in a championship called Is It a Bird, Is It a Plane? So there you go. That's, uh, that's our, all of our exclusive cars. And then in spring, you can pick up the Porsche 356 SL, Lotus Elise 99. You can join the, the Dino gang, if you haven't already, by winning it from that trial. And um, there you go. That's a festival playlist in a nutshell. All right. And just for anyone who's just, tuned, uh, just, for anyone who's just tuning in, do you just want to... Um, Quickly show us where those cars are again, just as, a, as an right. update. So just just the new cars. So we got the uh, the Lexus. Yep, fifty percent completion on summer. The uh, Rover SD1 in this championship right here. Then in autumn we've got uh, the Fortsalon Weekly featuring the Chiron, a new showcase remix, Pillar of Autumn. Then in winter the Aston Mar Martin Vulcan AMR Pro, the uh, Ford Supervan 3, and uh, that's it for all of our new and exclusive cars. All right, all right. Let's take the uh, Sharon out for a quick spin again. Um, <laughs> shall we take a look at the new cars that are coming in this series? 19 update. Yes. Yeah, so 
be nicely uh, nicely shot. Great. Sorry, um, I can think of the word. <laughs> <laughs> uh, shall we take a look at the new cars that are coming in this Series 19 update? Yeah, sounds good. And right. while I was on my travels, I got a new controller, so I can actually ah. drive them now. <laughs> well, you better be able to this time, otherwise... <laughs> no no more excuses. Reputation so, at stake. Uh, some people might have missed it earlier on the show, they might have only been joining partway through, so let's uh, run through these for anyone who has missed it. Right, so 50% completion in Festival Playlist was uh, the Lexus uh, LFA. Amazing that Lexus is back. Yep. And then in a seasonal championship, also in summer, we had, it's never over with the Rover, the uh, SD1. And in a winter, 50% completion of Festival Playlist, we had the Aston Martin Vulcan AMR Pro. And in a championship that same week in winter, the uh, Ford Supervan 3. Which one should we look at first, Mike? Um, well, I think you've got to... We should, we should always start with the very best, so let's go for the Rover. <laughs> <laughs> it's, good, it's a good chance for us all to have a little bit of a nerd out on this one, yeah. I think. I think we're, uh, we, yeah, we, a lot of people, I think, go, oh, I'm a Rover, but it's actually got a, a lot of history to it, hasn't it, this yep. car? Right, how long have you got? 20 minutes? <laughs> <laughs> shall we go? <laughs> well, go ahead, go and tell, tell us yeah. about the car, guys. So, uh, yeah, this was uh, kind of R Rover's foray into fast saloons. Um, you were saying it was actually quite um, quite forward thinking for, for when it was released. And it was penned by the same man that did the Ferrari 365 Daytona? Uh, no, it was uh, influenced heavily by the 365 oh. Daytona. The guy... Um, did, uh, did he use a piece of, of tracing paper? <laughs> 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 yeah, you can, you can definitely see the influence on it, the, the, sort front, of the slanty yeah. nose yeah, on, on the front of it with that. But uh, he, he was also responsible for a lot of the design work on the on the Range Rover as well, and you can you can definitely see that. But uh, yeah, it's, it's it's a really um, advanced design for its time. A lot of the materials when they designed it inside was meant to make it feel very futuristic. Uh, Matt, you, you had an interesting fact about the dashboard as well. Oh yeah, this uh, <laughs> this design that you see here is easily um, made left or right hand drive. Um, yeah, so it's like a, a whole binnacle that they could just yes, shift right, from one yeah. side to the other. Um, it, yeah, it's it it really clever. The fact, even the fact, it was it was a hatchback for the the boot or tailgate opening, depending where you're from. Um, yeah, that like that was quite uncommon at the time. A lot of the cars were either saloons or station wagons and they decided that rover owners of the future wanted a hatchback and, and so that was that um, and and yeah in a lot of ways uh, it sadly didn't quite live up to th the quality of the design and how good a car it was yeah i think with it being from british leylands they had a reputation for lorries and trucks and buses and things at the time they wanted to step into the executive car market and i think they turned internally to triumph and rover this yeah, is the same thing we're already, already having to get. Um, th uh, there's only 24 of them in the real world. And if you're one of the people that owns one of those 24 cars, you can upgrade it to the AMR Pro package. So that's going to add 25% more downforce to your car. Um, horsepower stays the same. It's five kilos lighter, I believe. Um, and it's just absolutely bonkers performance. How much uh, does that package cost? I don't think anybody if, actually knows. If you have to ask, you can't afford yeah, it. It's, <laughs> it's not public knowledge, I don't think. Does that, just, like, does that just remove you from the list, does it? Yeah, it's yeah. <laughs> they, they come and take the Vulcan <laughs> off of you. <laughs> so it produces something like 20% more downforce, doesn't it? Yeah, I think it's 25% more, but um, the really astonishing figure is it produces more than Aston Martin's uh, Vantage GTE car, so their actual race car. Uh, it's oh, ma wow. making more downforce than that. Yeah, yeah. it's quite pronounced, the, the visual differences as well. Like the, uh, the front bumper, you can see that it's got the big uh, dive planes on it. Yeah. And does Big the icon printer. on that yellow button look like uh, ice cream sundae to anybody else? Uh, do you, yeah, that's your ice cream sundae dispenser. <laughs> nice. <laughs> Essential it, on a it, might, day, yeah. it might, might be a radio, but we'll go with uh, ice cream sundaes. Yeah, I'm sticking with that. Yeah. That's <laughs> <laughs> well, if it isn't a thing, it should be, definitely. <laughs> so yeah, if you need your, your track car, car to be yeah, even more be. ridiculous, then this is the upgrade package. That you and, and who doesn't? When you're buying a track car, you want the most ridiculous version of it. That's right. I, I imagine the uptake on this version of it would have been pretty high because if you're already in that very small yeah. group of people who is able to purchase this car in the first place, you probably Yeah, like Chris says, money's, yeah. money's no object, right? So you just go for it. Yeah, yeah. it's made by the Q branch, Q division. They do like the bespoke Aston Martin stuff. Mm. Yeah, very cool. Definitely playing into a little uh, franchise tie up there. <laughs> yes, yeah. It's excellent. Yeah. So, yeah, it's uh, pretty much as fast as you can go. On a, in a private track day car, not a race Probably car. Probably nine brand because it's too loud for no. noise rags. Very true. <laughs> yeah. It does sound absolutely phenomenal yeah. as well. 
it's, yeah. it's with a seven litre V12 and this is one of the most special engines ever made, I think. Yeah. Great, and that is available for completing 50% of the festival playlist in winter. That's right. All right, should we uh, take a look at the van? Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Another piece of legendary British engineering. Yeah. This, is, this is also a car that I've been trying to get into the game for a long time, all the way back to, I think, H2 I started trying to get it into the game. We, we were luckily, so Ford down at Dagenham have a secret collection of some of their past cars. Mm. Uh, we got access to that, and this is one of the cars we, we sourced, um, luckily. Um, when so you say we, was it one of you two that went down Unfortunately not, no, as uh, one of our sourcing <laughs> team. Um, um, they had a very special day, because I've, I've seen what that collection has in it, and there's some incredible cars in there, and some, some more that are going to be coming in uh, the next few series as well, actually. Cool. Um, so th this car was built to celebrate the launch of the uh, Mark III Transit. Yeah. Um, it's actually built on top of the Supervan mm -hmm. II. Um, but with the, the Mark III body um, in 7 8 scale. Um, powering it used to be a Cosworth HB Formula One engine, but in recent years, Ford have taken that out to put a more usable uh, 3 litre V6 in it so that press can drive it and your, your everyday person rather than Formula One drivers. Um, that's the version we've got because the car we source is the car we build, and that's, that's what it currently is. And so we stay true to that. But there are engine swaps to put the the classic uh, racing V12 in it and the, the racing V8 as well. So you can still give it the, the F1 power levels. Um, so you were talking about the, the seating position before, weren't you? Yeah, so you'd, you'd think this is to make it central and more race car. It's actually because when you open the door, there's a air vent that goes straight into the back where the engine is. So they've moved the driver a couple of feet just to get some air into the back of the car. Um, it's also a really strangely letterbox sort of view that you get out of it mm, if you've yeah. ever like sat in a van and how high up and how good your visibility is it's really strange to i can't even imagine huh. what this would be like to drive like a transit van you drive like this like try yeah. driving like a 700 horsepower f1 powered <laughs> car like that it just, it just it would be very odd yeah, is there much storage imagine. space in the back can you fit your tools in there no yeah. there's there's a three litre v6 in the back so <laughs> you do what I do. I always tab all the way along to the end. Uh, it's because I usually go to the car collection screen. I'm usually working in that area, so I'm just just have it. Just, it's okay. It's okay. We can't all be experts okay. at the game. It's fine. <laughs> just, um, all right, you can drive it then, Mike. <laughs> cool. So I guess the long-awaited Lexus LFA. It's cool. We've got the uh, Active Aero up already. Oh, Chris, you had some really good facts about the. Uh, the dials in this one, didn't you? Yes, yeah, so it was one of the first cars to use an LCD uh, display, and Lexus's reason for it was the engine can rev so quickly, because it has such a lack of inertia, that it um, was outpacing the analog gauges, so they had to move to something more digital that could actually keep up with the way it was revving. Um, it's really cool the way it's got the, the stages of illumination, so it's just white when you're revving normally, and then you get towards the optimum shift point, and it goes green. And then you over rev it and it goes red. And if you've seen that in a real one, you'd probably be slightly worried, yeah. wouldn't you? But it's, uh, it's a very high revving engine. It is, yeah. yeah. It is. It's, a, it's also a very different v V10 to things like the Lamborghini and the Audi V10. Um, very different sound, which I think our audio guys have done a great, great, great job capturing. In fact, it's the, the audio asset is a Lexus LFA, um, especially worked up for this car. And it really captures the, the kind of the raw character of that V10. Yeah, so a completely bespoke car. The engine, everything not shared with any other Toyota yep. or Lexus, they made it specially for this car as like an engineering exercise. Yeah. And it led to the car being quite expensive, but also like no compromise for the driving experience. It's considered even you know, you're to right this day. It's like straight, 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 straight. No, we're going right now. <laughs> so. See, I wasn't kidding you. Yeah, They're yeah. just praising the Lexus LFA's handling and my yeah. <laughs> These dev controllers, the they, they see a lot of wear. Yeah, this has definitely been uh, borrowed from QA. Yeah. Yeah, uh, definitely <laughs> lost a few Eliminator matches. Gripping by a very the small amount of time. Yeah. Like, but yeah. Um, yeah. This is even to this day. This is regarded as one of the greatest cars ever built. I think it's one of Jeremy Clarkson's favorite cars mm. still. Mm. He's a man that gets to drive every amazing car. And they've said they don't want to build another one, or at least not in the near future. No. So its status is very much like yeah. cemented in car culture and, and history. Yeah. I'd, I'd argue they they don't need to either. Exactly. It still looks so fresh yeah. as well, considering how old the design is. I, I think the I can't remember exactly. You have to. Me, but the, the project started in about 2000, yeah. 
Wow. And wow. like, so that's now a 20 year old design, effectively. Yeah, yeah it doesn't look it. Does in it? fact, no. um, they actually they had a full working prototype, but it was before carbon fiber was still uh, was was something that was like actually feasible. Usable, option, yeah. yeah. And then once that became something that you, they could actually manufacture, they they pretty much binned off the whole pro project to go back to something that was mainly carbon fiber construction. Oh, wow. So that's that's the kind of time scale they they just kept going until what it was what they deemed to be perfect and. I think I think they managed it. It's it's yeah. a timeless car as well because they didn't go for the high performance numbers. They tried to make something that's so amazing to drive. So it's what's called lift neutral. Um, it doesn't make downforce. It doesn't make um, any lift. It's actually a very hard thing to do aerodynamically. But what it means is the grip you have is all about its mechanical grip. Um, so it makes it incredibly easy to read and, and drive. So, yeah, it's a car that I don't think we'll see many like it ever again. So like different from the rest of the portfolio as well yeah. uh, for Lexus and, and Toyota. Yeah, so thank you Toyota for yeah, letting us have it back. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, really for a while, didn't it? It really like, just raised the cool factor of the entire Lexus range. Because yeah. like, you couldn't afford or even get, if you could afford it, an LFA. But it makes you look at the, the, the badge with uh, yeah. a bit more of a cool factor. And even yeah, this absolutely. day, you can still see that kind of ethos still lingering in, in Lexus is that the is IS, I, I, ISF is one of the last normally aspirated V8 cars going. Um, whenever yeah. all its competitors have now gone forced induction, they've kept with that high revving V8. Um, yeah, this did a lot of uh, development work at the Nürburgring as well. And it was always really cool to watch them developing that. It sort of brought that to the attention of a lot of people yeah. that all these manufacturers were developing all these amazing cars on that amazing circuit. They did a Nürburgring special they did, edition, yeah. didn't they? It was a very interesting shade of orange. Yeah.